What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video. It's another cold day in Washington. It got down to like almost zero last night. The shop was like 20 degrees this morning. Finally got it warmed up enough to get started on the truck. So today we got the rear wheel bearings to do. So I got the tires off and now we got to pull the axle shafts out of the housing. Very simple to do. There's four nuts. There's a brake line, an e-brake line, and I believe that's it. And the whole axle shaft will slide out of the housing. So that's all we got to do. A little pin on the e-brake line here, the 10 millimeter brake line, the actual hard line, and then these four nuts around the housing. So we'll pull that out, pull the shafts out, and then we can start tearing these down and getting these bearings pressed out. Now, if you guys remember when I did the rear wheel bearings on the red truck, I don't have the actual tool they make to be able to put this whole axle shaft in the press. So what I was doing is smashing the thing on the ground on a piece of wood on the end of the shaft to get the backing plate and the bearing pressed, basically pressed off, smashed off the shaft. I'm gonna do a little different this time. That hurt my hands. It was like a half hour of straight beating the freaking axle shaft. So we're not doing that. I'm gonna build myself a tool. So I'm gonna show you some of the materials I got. So I'm just building this out of stuff I had laying around. So this is actually off the backing plate of a Toyota axle. So that will bolt right onto the plate that's on there to be able to put that in the press. So basically what we gotta do, take a piece of pipe, weld it onto here, and then weld a plate on top for to sit on top of the press. And then I'm also gonna neck it down a little bit to this size so I can press the bearing back on with the same tool. So let's get the axle shafts pulled out of the truck and then we can start measuring and figuring out what we need to do to build this tool. We got both axle shafts off. Look how roached out this bearing is. I thought the ones on my red truck were bad. They weren't even close to that. But either way, what we got is this cup. So this cup is going to bolt onto that. Then we're gonna take, like I said, we're gonna take a piece of the pipe, come up enough to get it in between this main bar here. The whole brake hub assembly is gonna sit underneath and then we got to make a top plate to catch the top of that. And then, like I said, I'm going to neck it down a little bit with this. This is inch and a half schedule 40. I believe this is two inch schedule 40. Yeah, two inch schedule 40, inch and a half schedule 40. And then we got to cut a plate, cut a hole in it, and we're going to slide this through the plate. I know this probably doesn't make sense me trying to explain it, so I'm going to start building it. We'll get it built and I'll show you our final product.
guys, there's the tool. We got it fully welded in. So welded here, here, I did on both sides of that. And then also I put a bead down in the inside of there. So let's see if this thing works. And I also built this uh, little extension type of deal that's gonna sit right on top. And these little pegs kind of hold it in. It's actually a very tight fit just to keep it from moving. So I'll have to pound it on there. So this is gonna be used when we put the axle back together and press the bearings back in, we have to raise this up. So that's why I built that. But let's go see if this thing works. So all we gotta do is pull this little circlip deal out of here. And then there's this collar and then the bearing. So we'll pull that clip off, get the tool bolted on here, and then we'll set it up in the press and see if it'll work. All right guys, that's how it should look up in the press. So I got it on these blocks and got the bigger like square cut out. So it's, it's well supported here. And I also jacked up the top threaded part of that jet of the ram. So should be pretty good. Let's try it out and see if we can pop these bearings out. Yes, it works guys. Pop the bearing out, no problem. So now we just gotta pull that off like that. We'll have to clean all that up. You can see all the oil in there. So now we gotta pull the tool off, get the bearing out of the backing plate, which they usually aren't very stuck in there. So it should pop right out. There it is guys, bearing came right out. Look how much play is in this thing. Now I'll probably pull these brakes apart because I'm gonna replace them anyway. I have all new pads and a whole hardware kit and I wanna get all this cleaned up. It is nasty in here. So I'm gonna pull all these brakes apart and then we'll clean this, clean the shaft and get it ready for a new set of bearings. All right, we got this all apart, ready to start cleaning, waiting for the parts washer tank to warm up. So in the meantime, I suppose we could get this bearing pressed out, get this one stripped down, and then we can clean everything at once.
All right guys, we're all cleaned up, ready to go. So cleaned up pretty good. So this is all we have. We have bearing, we have two seals, the collar, and then the, uh, the C-clip. So the seal, this weird looking seal with a big lip goes on the inside, just like that, press it into there. And then the bearing obviously goes right in here. And it's not a very tight press at all. So I think I'm just gonna take a hammer and kind of tap it in make sure we get that in and then we'll have to get the backing plate and the axle together we'll get this collar on and the way this collar goes you can see there's a tapered side right here that always points towards the inside of the truck we'll get the seal on get the bearing in we'll slide it in and then we'll th we'll throw everything in the press with the tool and then we'll be able to press the bearing and the collar onto the shaft Well, this bearing's a little tighter than I thought. I got it, I don't know, quarter of the way in. So we gotta get something. I really don't wanna press on the inside of the bearing here. You really wanna press on the outside. So I gotta find something that diameter. We can set it up in the press and just press it in. It'll be much easier that way. All right, that went together very smooth, very easy. One good way to tell you got it all the way pressed on is this, this cutout for the clip. So you can see it is right there. So now we just gotta get this clip on. We'll have to expand it a little bit, get it seated in that groove, and we should be done with this bearing install. There we go guys, both shafts are back together and good to go. So I gotta say guys, having that tool is a huge lifesaver. You guys have seen me do it both ways. It is much easier to do it with a tool. So if you guys don't wanna build one, go buy one if you're gonna do this job. I'll have one of these tools linked down below if you wanna check it out, just to make it easy for you guys. So the next thing we gotta do is swap out the main oil seal that's on the housing. So we gotta pull that out, get the new seals installed, and then we can throw the axle shafts back into the housing.
All right, guys, got the axle shafts back in and bolted in. So now we got to get these pads together. So we got this one arm for the e-brake cable that goes there. And then this arm goes on top of it there and a couple of clips to put on. And then we can throw the pads and all the brake components on the truck. All right, we got the brakes together, so you can see. I had to use my old rusty hardware for these springs and pins because the new pins I bought were too short and the springs were longer, so they wouldn't go on no matter what. The spring was just bottomed out. So I had to use the old ones. Not a big deal, they should work. So I think before I go any farther and put the wheels and tires on, I think I'm gonna paint the inside of this because I don't have hubcaps, so I got some Pour 15. It works really well on really rusted stuff. That's really what it's made for is heavily rusted steel. So we'll throw some Pour 15 on it and then we can bleed the brakes, get the drums on, wheels and tires, and we'll be done. Well, that's it guys, we're all done. All finished up with the axle, so 100%. If you need to do rear wheel bearings, go down in the description, follow my link to that tool. It will save you so much time and headache doing this job. Well, I really hope it helps you guys out. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in the next video.